In this video, you will learn everything you need to fully understand the Smart Animate feature in Figma. Also, if you want to create motion that looks unique, make sure you stick till the end for some bonus material on how to customize your animations. Now, let's get into it. All right, so let's start with addressing what is Smart Animate. Oftentimes you have two frames, just like this, with an object that changes between those two frames. So here we have a rectangle, here we have a rectangle that's a bit bigger and that rotates. If we go into the prototype settings, a flow is already added here so we can check it out. Now, if I click this, it's gonna rotate and it's gonna grow in size. If I click it again, it goes back. Let's look at how it works in practice. Let's recreate something similar. So the first thing we want to do is to duplicate the frame. So here we have a frame with an object. I duplicate it. I'm gonna rename this frame to frame number two so that I can separate them. What we want to happen here in this case is maybe we want this to shrink and we still want it to rotate, but maybe a bit more. So I want the rectangle here to turn into this. So the second thing, apart from duplicating and changing the object, is going to be to add a flow. So I add a flow starting point. Then I'm going to go to the object where I want to add an interaction. So I want something to happen on click and a click on this object. So I'm going to go to this object. I can see this little circle with a plus in it. If I hover it, I'll take that, press it, drag it to the next frame. We can see that we get this interaction details menu. It says on click, which is what we want. We can change from drag while hovering, when pressing, etc. But it's going to be on click. It's going to navigate to frame number two. And the animation is going to be smart animate. Usually it defaults to instant, but we want it to be smart animate. So that's correct in this case. Then we get the option to choose what kind of animation we want. Is it going to be ease in, ease out, ease in and out, etc, etc, etc. Then we have something called custom bezier and we have custom sprint. I'm going to give you some bonus stuff on that later, but let's stick to this for now. So we have ease in 300 milliseconds and that's really it to start playing around with the first stage of the animation. So let's hit play. We go into this. If I click it, boom, the animation occurs. Cool. So if I click it again, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, we didn't add an interaction trigger from this object back. So I click this object. Once again, I hover this circle and press the plus, or I could click the interactions tab up in the right and click plus here and then choose from here what I want to happen. I want it to navigate to, and then I can choose the frame from here. Usually I think it's just easier to use this because it's more visual. So you grab that and I redirect it back. On click, navigate to one. So frame number one, it's gonna do a smart anime, ease in 300 milliseconds. Go back to the prototype. Now I click it again and it animates back. Let's look at a different example. So here we have some kind of sidebar. And in this example, I want this sidebar to, when I click a button, I want it to slide out, then I want to be able to close it, and maybe I want to be able to expand it when I hit a button as well. So I'll duplicate this three times because we wanted three different interactions. So one, two, and three. So remember, I wanted it to slide out on the click of a button. So that means the first state has to be where we don't see the sidebar. That means I'm gonna hide it in the first frame. Here, I've already put a button in the background. For this to work properly, we want all the objects to be on each frame. That's why I duplicate it, to make sure that we have the same objects with the same names in each of these frames. So when I click this, I want this to slide out. And then when we click this, I want this whole thing to expand. So I'm gonna drag this out and maybe when I click it, this is actually gonna just maybe shrink and then fade out. So let's go back to the first frame, click this thing, add a trigger. So to this frame, I want on click, navigate to frame number two, and then we want smart animate easing. That's, that's cool. Then on this frame, I want when I click this, 
I wanted to go to this frame number three and on quick number three, smart animate is in 300 milliseconds. Cool. And for each of these frames, whenever we click this, I want it to go back to the first state like that and here as well like that. Now let's try it out. Click play, click here. Okay. It animates in like we wanted to click that. It works. As you can see, it's super simple. Now there are cases where you don't want to use multiple frames to create your smart animations. And those cases are for interactive components. So if you want to create drop downs or accordions or maybe buttons with different states, then you're using interactive components. And that's a different topic. And that's going to be in this video in the top here that I haven't created yet, but it's going to be there in just a bit. As a last bonus, let's look at the different custom animation alternatives we have in Figma. First, we have Bezier animations, then we have Spring animations. If you want to go into depth, you can check out Matt Seam's blog for Bezier animations, and you could check out Figma's own blog for Spring animations. They're going to be linked in the description below. All right, so first, let's take a look at Bezier animations. I click this interaction I created, and when the curve looks like this, linear, it's just a straight line, then the animation is going to be linear. It's going to be just a boring animation that goes zoo, zoo, zoo. If we start taking this handle and dragging it to the side like this, you're going to see that the curve kind of, it goes fast and then it slowly comes to the end here. It goes fast, slowly comes to the end of the animation. If I drag this, here, it's going to go slowly, then fast, and then slowly again. And if we take the handles and place them above the top line and beneath the baseline, like this, it's going to be bouncy because it starts out by going back and then shoop, fast, and then past the last point and boom, back down. So you can play around with this and get a feel for how it works yourself. I think that's the easiest way to get a grip of animations. Then we have spring animations, and this is based on real physics. We can see here in Figma's article where mass, which is a property we have, we have mass, damping, and stiffness. So mass just indicates how heavy is an object. And we have stiffness. Stiffness is a property unique to springs. If you've ever pulled on a spring before, you know that the further you pull on it, the harder it resists. Then we have damping. Physical objects eventually come to a stop due to friction. Like wind on the highway or skidding on a carpeted floor with socks, the faster something is moving, the more resistance it encounters. So with that in mind, let's jump into this interaction I created and start playing around with it. So if I drag this little handle here, you can see how the numbers down here change. So if I drag it to the left, I add a lot of stiffness here which makes the landing super stiff. If I add mass to this, you can see that it bounces, which makes sense because the object is heavier. So the spring, when I release it, the object is going to bounce a bit. If it's super light, so let's say one, you can see now it doesn't bounce, but the more mass I add, the more bounce it adds. So I would suggest playing around with this as well. You can see that stiffness and damping go in tandem. So when I move stiffness, the damping moves as well. We can drag it down and up like this. You can see the further up I drag it, the lower the damping is. So you would maybe imagine what happens here when I release it. Boom, 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 boom. It just never stops bouncing. And if I drag it down to the baseline, the bounce is very small. Drag it down even further, there is no bounce. So play around with this one as well. Read Figma's article if you want to go into depth. That would be my suggestion. Now, if you want to create really advanced animations with Smart Animate, then check this out. And if you feel like supporting the like button, the sub button, the comment button, the bell notification button, all of these things really, really help, guys. Until the next one, I want you to take care. We'll talk soon. Ciao.